Today on Crossing Paths. I knelt out, led me in a prayer, changed my life. I got up, God got on the inside of me and scrubbed me all up. Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar from Alpha Lions Den Ministries in Derry, Pennsylvania. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to today's show. You're in for another treat. We always encourage you, get on the phone, call your friends and family members and neighbors, send them a couple texts, tell them to tune into the show now. If they cannot do that, tell them to go to our website. It's always on a streamer or on the bottom of our screen, crossingpast.org. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce to you today Donald Reed Sr., the founder of Crossing Pass Ministries. You know, Ron, I'm sort of reading the Bible here, but I had no, absolutely no desire to read the Bible years ago. None. And I just, uh, every time in a while when you have a new guest play, sometimes we find common ground or drinking, gambling or whatever. And I can't thank the Lord enough that I'm sitting here today my wife is always behind me, and mm. it's hard to sometime when you're going through some sicknesses. And like my wife, I'm want you to pray for her and pray for me and pray for the ministry. And uh, also keep supporting us uh, on the food ministry, which is how many a week? How many do we feed a week uh, down there? We run? try to do 30 families of four. 30, 30 families of four every single week we do. We how, put how about many, 400 boxes a, a month. How, how many times a week? Set up used to be three, now it's two with the pandemic and so, everything. But we so we're trying to do and get the word of God out. So yeah. back uh, back again from my from my friend here because uh, he gave a testimony before it was so good, and he's got such much talent, but it was wasted too. He didn't know what he was going to do. Young, eighteen years old, and here he sits today, a pastor, and Ken McGrath. And I'm so I'm so proud to meet you. And if it wasn't for Ken Falk, I don't, I'll just call up Ken and say, how many what? Yes, he says, he gives them, you know that, right? Yes. You know, why don't you say hello to Ken, will you? Hey, Ken Falk. Yeah. So anyways, you're a businessman now, and you've written some books, and let's talk about when you finally got your marbles together, <laughs> as we call, right? Sure. Uh, at 18, and you went into business and got married. Tell me a little about all these businesses God's using you in. Yeah, right now I, I own an advertising agency. It's called McGaffick Advertising, and we do everything from social media to television spots to direct mail. And we handle a number of different accounts from car dealerships to furniture uh, dealers. Uh, we do that. My wife and I actually run Old Fashioned Christmas in the Woods. It's a large craft show in Columbiana, Ohio. Uh, we bring in 200 crafters, we set them up in wooden booths, and we have three stages of entertainment, have 20 food booths, and we get people that come from 31 different states to come to attend the show. Mm. It was voted in 2020 as the number one contemporary craft show in the country Whoa. by Sunshine Artist Magazine. Mm. And uh, a few years ago, I had a lady from California call up, and she wanted to know whether she should fly into Pittsburgh or Cleveland to come to the show. And I'm saying, you're just coming for, for the show? And she said, yeah. And I'm thinking it's good, but I don't know if it's that good. <laughs> and uh, she, I told her, fly into Pittsburgh. She flew into Pittsburgh, and when she was leaving, they asked her, was it worth it? And she said she'd be back in a heartbeat. And God just gave us an idea to do that, and, and he's blessed it. Well, what do you mean by craft show? I mean. It's a craft show. We have 200 crafters that come in. Each, the blacksmith does the blacksmithing. The potter does the potter. They all dress in costume and they demonstrate their craft. And uh, then they sell their sell their Is sell their that wares. in the woods or what? what, what it's, in, it's a wooded setting, which makes it unique. We have a split rail fence. It's all in the woods. That's why it's called Old Fashioned Christmas in the Woods. And where's that at again? It's in Columbian, Ohio. Okay. We run it the second and third weekend of every October. And people say, it's a Christmas show. Why do you do it in October? It's because it's too cold <laughs> in December. You don't want to be out there in December. I don't want to be out there. So we get, we get thousands of people that come from all over the country to come to attend the show, well, believe it there, or not. Is there a cost to that? Yeah, yeah, that we have an admission cost. We charge the crafters, and then there's an admission cost. Sure. We have three stages of entertainment. Uh, Vanessa Compagna usually sings for us. She did a song with Michael W. Smith, uh, The Waymaker, mm -hmm. that was 
Yeah, from all, all, over, all yeah, over the world. Them, yeah. She comes and she sings there. Yeah. I've had Russ Taft there. He used to sing mm -hmm. with the Imperials. Yeah. Uh, but it's entertainment's just part of it. It's a craft show that has entertainment. It's not entertainment that has a craft show. Mm -hmm. the, the focus is on the crafters. No, is that over a weekend or how many it's days you do it? two weekends. Second and third weekend of October. Just on the weekend? Just on the weekend. Okay, yeah. In, yeah. in October. In October. Mm -hmm. So it's, wow. you know, it's... So it, that's one of your... That's ventures. one of those. We do that. And then I'm associate pastor of Wildwood Chapel. Uh, it's in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. And I've been, I've been involved in ministry there almost since I came to know Christ 50 years ago. But um, How many members do you guys have now? Uh, we have uh, over 100 members mm -hmm. that, that come That's to the good. church. Yeah. Good. yeah. But, you know, real quickly, I want to go back. Is it light up at night? Is it it's like a... No, it's during the day. It's during the it's day. Ten, okay. It's 10 to 5 so, during the day. Oh, or, or excuse me. It's 9 to 5. It used to be 10 to 5. It's 9 to 5 during the day. And uh, last year with the pandemic, it kind of put a crunch on things, but it's going to be full blast once again, mm. and uh, it's, 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 worth, it's worth going to. Okay, and then, and then what, uh, these are ventures. What else are, yeah. are you doing? Well, that's it. I, I recently uh, wrote a book and published a book. It's called It's Hard to Do Good, and it was released June 8th of 2021. Okay. We just put it out. And uh, the reason, what gave me the idea to do the book was one day I was driving home to the y YMCA. I used to be on the YMCA board for 13 years, and uh, what I liked about the Beaver County YMCA is they emphasize the C, which not all Ys do, but they emphasize the C, the Christian yeah, part. Yeah, right. And I was coming home one morning, and I live right up, I live up a five iron away from the high school up there. I could hit, a, hit the high school with a five iron, but these kids were several blocks away, and it was raining. And I said, well, I'm going to offer them a ride to school. Then I said... I can't do that. A middle-aged guy offering kids a ride yeah. to school. I said, it's hard to do good. And that gave me the idea to write the book. It's hard to do good. And God's commanded us to do good. Tells us to, uh, said Jesus went about doing good. Uh, it commands us in Psalms to do good all throughout the Bible. Why do you think it's hard to do good? Uh, well, you got government re restrictions on it now. And just... The fact that the enemy opposes us from doing mm -hmm. good. Satan opposes us from doing good. So I basically go into this. This book is more experience. Rather than preaching, it's more just experiences that happened in my life. Mm -hmm. One of the ones that stick out in my mind was I, when I'd been on before, I talked about going to Christ for the nations. I had never been back to Christ for the nations over for 40 years. I'd never went back to there. Mm -hmm. And... I kind of felt God led me a few years ago to go back. Well, when I made that decision, I felt such a fear of going back, of flying down there and going back. Hmm. And now I know it was the enemy, but through prayers of friends of mine and that, I said, well, I'm going to go down there. So I went down there, and I met the, uh, one of the people that ran the school, and we were talking. He was taking me around and showed me the campus. When I went there, there was 120 students. Now there's over 1,000. So it's grown quite a bit. Mm. And he took me around, and then he said, I want you to talk to my class about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I said, okay. He said, there'll be about 400 people there. There'll be about 400 kids there. And he said, I want you to share about it. And he really didn't know me other than me, met me there, and I talked to him on the phone. So it was kind of unusual that he would open up the pulpit and let me do that. So I said, yeah, I'll do it. And this is Christ for the nations, yeah. people, kids from all over the world. Yeah. So I went and I shared, and, uh, and God blessed and moved, and people had gotten baptized with the Holy Spirit. It was, it was good. Well, I went home, and I was sitting in the couch that I usually pray at, and God reminded me of a, uh, uh, that I had had a prophecy spoken over me uh, years before. And I went up, and I got a cassette tape. They recorded it on cassette, and I... I had just thrown it in my sock drawer, personal prophecy. I never based my life over personal prophecy because I've seen the abuse mm -hmm. of it. Right. I didn't have a cassette player at home. I took it to work. I plugged it in, and what it said in there was basically, and it's in, it's in the book, was uh, a lady was prophesying over me, and she said, I see you in a room. She said, not a church, just a big building. And she said, well, what she said was, I see you throwing down feed for sheep. All different colors. Mm. There's black ones, green ones, blue ones, yellow ones. 
And she said, I was trying to figure out what it was. And then she said, then I realized. She said it was people from all different nations. Amen. And you're That's putting good. down seed for these people. Mm -hmm. She said, you're in a big building in a room in that. And she used nations six times. She never said countries. Mm. And, uh, and that's what I did. And it was 12 years, almost to the day, that that prophecy was given to me that I went down and spoke at Christ for the Nation. Whoa. Just going down, visiting the school. Mm. And, and, uh, and that's why the enemy brought that fear to try to resist yeah. what God wanted to do. Yeah. So that's one of the parts of it's hard to do good. Yeah. Mm. You know, you, you find a resistance yeah. there. We're in a battle. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right. but against principalities, powers, spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. So therefore, we're to put on the whole armor of God. Right. We're to stand firm against the wiles and the schemes of the devil. And that's what this is all about today. It's about letting people know that you know, just like when we were looking and talking about your book, it's hard to do good. And then you talked about being filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's the power of God. Yes. You know, and that's the one of the things of our armor that people forget about. I told Donna one day, I said, look at that last verse down there. It says, and at all times, pray at all times in the Spirit. It's the last thing it mentions. Right. He saved like the best for last. Pray, pray at all times in the Spirit. But I'm really interested on reading this book. I pray that you guys also get it too. And once again today, guess what? Me or Dawn's not going to do something to think about. This, this is branching out into other people's lives. So Ken, our guest today, is actually going to do something to think about. And it is on its availability, not ability. So listen, not, not everything is based just on your ability. Amen. It's on your availability. You've got to be available in order for God to be able to use you. So listen, we're going to pause now. We're going to go to something to think about. We'll be right back, so don't go away. I grew up in a neighborhood that had so many kids that when we had pickup baseball games, we had enough players to field two teams. You would select two captains. They, in turn, would pick their teams. And everybody knew who they were picking. They were picking the best hitters, the best throwers, and the best catchers. And the other kids, it didn't matter whose team they played on. See, it's not that way in God's kingdom. The Bible says of David, who was a type of Christ, that men gathered unto him, men that were in debt, men that were discontented, men that were discouraged. And under his leadership, they became mighty men of valor. Look at Jesus. When he picked his disciples, he didn't pick the cream of the crop, but under his leadership, they were men that turned the world upside down. So if you feel like you don't rate or you're kind of just left over, Jesus isn't looking for ability. He's looking for availability. And under his leadership, as the captain of our salvation, it doesn't matter how the world keeps score, you're on the winning team. God bless you. Hey, Ken, that was a great segment. I hope you guys at home really enjoyed that. Me and Dawn, we're just kind of getting things started, and these new guests are taking over. What do you think, Dawn? I don't know. Maybe maybe we better look out. You know, who knows? I don't maybe. know. All these talented people coming around. You know what? When you, whenever he stopped there, I just wrote something down. Uh, the, the scripture that everybody should be doing, mm -hmm. and what he's doing, and what we're doing, and maybe what you're not doing, is be about my father's business. Ooh. That's now, a it's one. a beautiful scripture falls right in here. Uh, there's different talents out there. There's mm -hmm. your, some of you are hiding your talents under a bushel basket, yeah. and God wants to use them. I don't care whether you're 50, 60, 70, 80, or my age, why God's got something for you. And this gentleman is out there taking all these gifts. Now, he's not only doing it for the funds and the money and so forth, he's being a witness. So tell me, maybe you can some of your experiences with this, what you just did there on something to think yeah, what, about. What, we, what we've started doing about five months ago is putting together what, what I call McMinutes, which is a little brief, about one minute, maybe one minute, 10 seconds, just picking out different top, top, topics that God brings to my mind and focusing on them and doing a one minute video. And people say, well, why do you keep it one minute? Well, people's attention span nowadays 
is it's about a minute. Is about it's about <laughs> a minute. If it's any longer than that, yeah. they're not going to watch it. So I keep them about a minute. They're good. And and, and yeah. thank you. And then I release them through YouTube. I also have them on McGaffic.com. They can go and see all of them. And I release one a month. And what I do too is I send it to. Uh, I'm in a golf league. I send it to all the golfers. Some of them know Jesus. Some of them don't. I said I'm in a pickleball thing, uh-huh. so. I like pickleball, so I send it to everybody that's on the pickleball, and we release it and use it as an opportunity to sow the seed into people's lives. You know, it amazes me. As you could say a lot in a minute. I have a friend, Tom McGuff. A lot of people know who Tom is, and Tom does a power minute, and he sends those to me. And I'm like, man, this guy says a lot in a minute. And when I was watching yours, I'm like, this is the same thing. This guy is saying a lot in a minute. And when you told me it's only a minute long, I'm like, there's no way he said all that in a minute. That's yeah. good. Think about Jesus. I mean, a lot of his, the most, uh, <laughs> most uh, recognized scripture, in, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten. Yeah. Just sure. Boom. It doesn't have to be long because nowadays the attention span with television and everything. They're gone. They're, they're, they're not, gone. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to listen to it. So you plant the seed where you can plant the seed. Yeah. And I'm just praying that God will bless it and prosper it. So that's what I do. So our audience understands you do once of those a month, and it's uh, on once your... Once a week. Once a week. Once a okay. week, and I release them on, like, Wednesday. All right, like and it's on your website, of which we'll McGaffic. have... McGaffic.com, where they can go to YouTube and just put McGaffic there, and it'll bring it'll bring them up. Okay. Is, is there a telephone number, too, with it? I, uh, I didn't see any. Yeah, prob- they could... Ken at McGaffic.com. Oh, okay. They can release... You yeah, know, you they can get hold of me. You don't want to call if me. They, yeah. you know, they, they're welcome to call me. You know, you know down in my office, CPA, accounting firm, read tax service, we have Facebook, substance of things. You know, we run that, you know, different... Every mm-hmm. three times a day, different scriptures at my yeah. office, you know? And we're in a prime time, you know what I mean? So who knows? Somebody will... Uh, Pick that up, you know. Yeah. It's like planning, you know. Be it's about like, my father's business. It's like I am you and I'm Ron in his church. I want to ask you a question, too. Uh, we had talked about uh, billboards. The reason why, uh, tell me a little bit about your billboards, uh, uh, how you do that, or do uh, you have people that go well, out? Well, we, the- we have people that, uh, I don't own the billboards itself. What we do is we lease the billboards. Uh, we have clients, whether it be furniture, auto dealers, banks, uh heating and air conditioning companies that want to put a message on there. And once again, the message has to be quick. They right, recommend yeah. you have to put eight words or less. Some people want to put an encyclopedia on the billboard. I said, it's not going to work. Well, I, well, you know, my wife wants it. My husband wants all this. I said, it's not going to work. You can't even read it. You water. can't read them. I mean, you're driving down the road in the car. So you want to keep them limited, the yeah. amount of words. But we place billboards for different companies and all over all over the world. And, and you're available in the Newcastle, Youngstown, Sharon, oh, certainly, Sharon area? Oh, certainly. Yeah, we have, we have clients in this area here. Because uh, we're, we're looking for, a, well, I'm against abortion, and I don't care what people say, sure. I make no bones about it, right. okay? So uh, well, I, I'm, I already talked to my attorney, and they're going to be calling you, but the thing is that uh, it's Christian. You know, you're, you don't, uh, you're not trying to, uh, I think you're exactly right. It's like, how, how long can you... Our television program sometimes is, uh, we try to keep it. Uh, yeah, your average sitcom is, it's 30 minutes, but it's actually only about 22 minutes after they put the commercials mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. yeah. And talking about abortion, I did one of the minutes on uh, Mother Teresa talking to, uh, uh, it was the, uh, in Washington, D.C., they have the prayer breakfast, and she was talking there, and a couple of the president, a president was sitting there that was pro abortion. And she said the number one scourge in America is, in the world, is abortion. She said, how can I tell people not to kill one another when we promote the mother actually killing her baby? Mm-hmm. And he's sitting right there, they're sitting right there, and she's, she's putting it out there. So that's one of my big minutes. Wow. So if someone had a billboard on their property, then you could work a deal out with them, right? Sure, certainly. Yep. Do, do you build bill, billboards? I don't. I know somebody that does, but no, I don't get involved. But with if that. someone wanted to do it yes, and had the money, wanted, right? Yeah, they could. And they could put location. it. Yeah. yeah, there's there's restrictions on that. You have to be so far from the road. And yeah, yeah. Lady Bird Johnson put in restrictions. You you'll see some billboards. You go down the turnpike and they're they're so high. You say, how can I even see it? Yeah. Well, it's still so many feet from the road. Mm-hmm. But it's just happens to be up in the yeah. air. Yeah. yeah. 
You know, Pastor, I'm just led here, trying to be led by the Holy Spirit, but the Lord stopped me here. I want you to look into that camera, all right? Now, I know you're a pastor, and some of us are windy, windy or long, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yes. It, it isn't how, how long you uh, talk or witness, it's, a, it's the anointing that comes mm -hmm. on you and I, as we did on the last show, you know. But I want you to look in there because I have a feeling there's somebody out there that's indecided in their life. They've got all these talents and they're either hiding it under a bushel basket or they're waiting for someone to come along and confirm it. So would you just take a minute in there, two minutes, whatever, and, and, and say a salvation message or whatever you, you know, I can't tell you what to say. I don't do that. You need to, if you have a talent and ability, you need to put it into action. If the church today was to write the Bible, Acts, Acts was the Acts of the Apostle. If, if it was written today, it would, be the, uh, it would be the Acts of considering doing it rather than actually doing it. Mm -hmm. It's a paralysis. It's the anal it would be the Acts of analysis. Mm -hmm. It's ana uh, uh, analyzing everything before you're acting upon it. We need to step out. God told Joshua, he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Mm -hmm. He said, now get up and enter into the promised land. He didn't get sentimental about it. And Moses was somebody that knew Jesus face to face. But God told Joshua, Moses, my servant's dead. Now let's get into the promised land. We need to push in to the promises that God has offered in our lives. There's no reward if you don't do something. Jesus said, the doers of the word are justified, not the hearers mm. of the word. We need to press through obstacles. That's why it's hard to do good. We have our emotions. We have what people have said about us, what the enemy has resisted us about. We need to press through that and do what God has called us to do. Mm. A lot of people never come to know Jesus as their Savior because they're worried about what their parents are going to say, what their wives or what their husbands are going to say, what their neighbors or their friends are going to say. You need to forget about that. You need to do what's best for you in the situation, and there's nothing better than to have Christ into your life. Yes. He can make a difference that no one else can make. Doesn't matter how much money you have, how much talent or ability you have, Christ is the one that can change your life. Amazing, amazing. I'm just sitting here. When I think about this book, you know, if you don't have the money, Crossing Pass will send it to you, pay for it free. That's part of our ministry here too. And I want to close here, Ron, and maybe you could just say something here, but of that book and then I'll close, all right? I just think as you look at that cover, it's hard to do good. And as Ken said earlier in his testimony, he went years with a struggle between his flesh and his spirit. First thing is, is you got to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's why, that's why the Lord told Nicodemus, a man must be born again. Because if you're not born again, you're not even in the battle. Mm -hmm. you're, you're totally out of it. So mm -hmm. you need to make sure you're born again and you know Jesus. Secondly, you need to make sure you're filled with the Holy Spirit because that's where you get the power. You can have a big old car out there sitting in your, in your garage, but if that thing's not full of gas, you're not going anywhere. And that's the way so many people are in their Christian life. They're Christians, but they don't have no power. So every single time that the power of sin grabs a hold of them, you're drugged back into the dirt. See, Jesus wants you to mount up with wings as eagles. He wants you to run and not grow weary. He wants you to walk and faint not. This is what Jesus wants for you, but you got to make that decision. Yeah, it's being born from above. Amen. Not, you know, you've had a physical birth. Now you've got to have a spiritual birth. Mm -hmm. And then some people know I've used this pen many a time, but the Holy Spirit's like this, and all you've got to do is ask Him to come in. He'll come into your life, but you still have the flesh. Yes. The war has just begun. Mm -hmm. Just begun. So, you know, people say, well, I don't have a problem. I've said this and heard this and heard everything you can think of in my life. Well, I don't have any problems at all being a Christian. I said, well, did you ever try witnessing? He said, well, what's that? Well, <laughs> that's why you have no problems. That's why you don't have any problems. <laughs> I don't mean you're going to have problems, but you do have problems as a Christian. That's why we've given over Bibles, a little pocket Bible, mm. like I said, you know, it, it, where a pack of cigarettes used to be. And I'm not, cigarettes will never send you to hell. I'm, I, I preach a different message sometimes. You just get to heaven 20 years earlier with cancer or some other sickness, so you can choose what you want. I don't know. But I can tell you what, habits are different 
there's habits, there's sin, and I know the body's a holy temple. I know all that. But you need to get what Jesus did. Sit down with the disciples. Sit down with the people. When I got their W-2s and their tax returns, they can't leave without hearing the gospel. And I started with one client today. I got 3,000 clients, 22 employees. Don't tell me Jesus isn't alive. Look at me, I'm sitting here today. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, I'm getting older, sure. So is my brothers and sisters. But I wanna tell you one thing, there's a free Bible waiting for you out mm -hmm. there, paid for, including the freight. We know a movie in my life, you all know that, a DVD, $15, you can have it. If you don't have the money, I'll send it. How about that? See, I can't do anything else except, I. God gave me, I have to give away, like he's doing with his businesses or whatever. So if you're out there today, you want this book or go to Amazon or whatever it is, please, today, not tomorrow, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Remember that. Yes. You can walk out of that car, out of your house, get killed. People have been known that. But do you know Jesus? I do. And I want you to know it. I say right now with my brothers here in Christ, today, Call that telephone number, 724-981-7777 or 1-855-981-9777. There'll be somebody to answer the telephone. There'll be a streamer coming across the bottom there where you can go to the website. You can watch every one of our television programs, every one, yep. on the webpage. Yep. Just think of that. What an amazing way today to tell people about Jesus. You today tell somebody about Jesus. God bless you. Hi, I'm in my backyard here and people have been asking me about Crossing Pass books and we found a couple of these in our inventory, Crossing Pass Treasure, uh, Volume One. And it is various people in their lives that appeared on our television program and some of them are very interesting. They're all interesting, but I want to tell you some of them if you would like to get this book, okay? So if you'd like to help us out with this ministry, we sure would appreciate it. We have Ben Kintro's life in there. There's so many good stories. These stories are all about their in individual lives and tell them about their lives. So for $15, you could send us or anything additional top that would help us to keep us on the air. God bless you and thank you. The most important decision you can make is the one to follow Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. In John chapter 14, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And in John 3.3, 3, he said, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. If you've made the decision today to follow Jesus as your personal Savior, we'd love to know about it. To help you get started, Crossing Paths wants to offer you the free gift of a Bible. So please call us locally at 724-981-7777. Or you can reach us internationally at 1-855-981-9777. If you would like to support a local family by donating to his food ministry and crossing paths, go to crossingpaths.org and click on the Donate Now button.